Hey, I have a question for you, James, that's sort of come up uh, for us in, in previous uh, discussions. Uh, you talk about disruption mm -hmm. and then there's the, the innovator's dilemma, right? So Tesla right now is the disruptor. At what point does Tesla face that innovator's dilemma? Like what, what technology change or what, what will happen that where Tesla is, is stuck wondering, do I, do, do we change our business model? Yeah. It's like from a tech standpoint that that's hard to see right now. It, companies that, that what, it, uh, who is it? You know, when Christensen wrote that book, the, the 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 title of the book, the innovator's dilemma, is that is that people should want to into what should want to innovate so that they stay at the leading edge. But the reality is that well-run companies don't do that. And so the whole book was a study on like why don't companies do this? And and at the end of the day, what Christensen concluded was that they don't do it because not doing it is the right thing to do from a fiduciary standpoint. If you run a business and that kind of stuff. Uh, like he looked at all these different ways that you could try to do it. And he did a, an analysis of different kinds of companies that tried to do it, you know, uh, and, and they never succeeded. And the reason they don't succeed is because all of the small decisions you make inside a company to try to make it successful, undermine your ability to disrupt yourself, right? That the incentives just basically don't work out. So what happens is you always get disrupted from the outside. In principle, we think that companies that are willing to disrupt themselves, to keep innovating to, themselves, to stay on, on the cutting edge, that that doesn't happen to them. Like what I would say, like based on history, is that Tesla will focus on being an innovator for quite a while and they won't get disrupted for quite a while because they'll because their company culture is to be an innovator and stay on top and that kind of stuff. But eventually everybody gets fat, dumb and happy. You make enough money, you got enough people bought in, now you're the incumbent or whatnot. And then you slack off and then, you know, that's, that's when, you know, yeah. history comes for you. And, and a key example to what you're saying is, mm -hmm. for example, like I was completely shocked when they finally did announce details of hardware for that they are adding cameras and they are doing things that, you know, we had earlier mm -hmm. podcast, you know, Doug and I and Mike discussed like, yeah, per personally, I'll say is I, I feel that there are limitations of Harbor three, not that it can't do it. It's that it's going to be mm -hmm. much harder to do it due to like not having a camera on the front. You can't see outside, you know, you can't see low to the ground in front of the car, moving ultrasounds, all these various types of things, having better angles, having, you know, higher definition, all those things can help you. And so I was surprised that they were willing to basically innovate in a, on the problem in a way that prevents, you know, makes it uh, almost harmful to some of their older customers, older products or mm -hmm. things like that which most companies wouldn't do. Most companies would go, you know what? This is where we have cameras. This is how all of our stuff is built. We're going to keep going this way until we can make it done. And Tesla's like, nope, we're going to remove these sensors. We're going to add these sensors. We're going to add some cameras. Yeah, that, that's always been around. Tesla's way. And I mean, that's, which is, that's, that's in, been, you know, it's, it's just I mean, interesting Tesla's that they were willing they to want. do that because they feel that it is necessary to get to the next level beyond just you know, thinking about it from Tesla's perspective, not just RoboTaxi, but, you know, an even safer RoboTaxi, for example, they felt they needed to do some of these things. Um, so anyway, so it's interesting that they're still innovating, but I agree with you, eventually they will stop innovating, like all companies do historically, it just eventually happens and then... Um, Intel, yeah. right? Intel's my favorite uh, example of this stuff right now, that they're, they're getting eaten. Um, for a long time, they were super innovative. Like they were so, you know, Andy Grove famously, only the paranoid survive, right? He ran that company, assuming that somebody was gonna come around the corner and try to take him down next week. And as long as he was doing that, they did great. But Grove went out, they stopped doing that and they're getting taken down. Now TSMC is eating their lunch. So, yeah. it, and it took so little time. Like it, for them, it was like, 20 years between when they were super hardcore and they had a change of management and they started, you know, they started slacking and because, you know, they had 90% gross, they were in the hardware business. They had 90% gross margins that it was such a cash cow, that business, it was super easy to just dominate the market and, and, you know, coast, you know, you, you don't really have right. to do anything that for five years, you can do anything you want. And that, that money fire hose is just going to keep going. It, it, it's a really corrupting influence on incentives. Yeah. Our, sure. uh, our textbook example, uh, in the EV space is Toyota, where they're just doing everything to keep <laughs> that hybrid synergy drive, uh, 
you know, yeah. uh, gravy train going. And they've, and as far as I can tell, they've uh, stalled and done whatever they can to, to, yeah. to slow down EVs when you think like, oh, this is, this is the, the company of the Prius. This is the company of the, uh, you know, the greenest car at, at a time. GM and, did the uh, EV1. Like I was, yeah. I was working at an EV startup, <laughs> right? Back in the EV1 days. Like it was so painful to watch that unfold. You know, GM go from being, kind of being on the leading edge and having that, like they, it yeah, was theirs too. to lose. And then not, not lost. only did they give it up, <laughs> but they like took it out back, shot it and buried it. Right. I mean, they yeah, really no didn't kidding. want it to happen. 